Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say you're very knowledgeable on this. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right. So I can see everybody's been well trained in the arts of volunteering. <laughs> in a small club, everything's very flexible. We don't have to really pay attention to corporate law and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, <laughs> unless there's a problem. Oh, and feel free if you want to nominate the guy next to you. Go ahead. We'll accept that. I nominate Levi. <laughs> so typically, in a, large, <laughs> in a large organization, the board of directors appoints a nomination committee, and they handle the nominations. And then the the uh, the holders, the stockholders, the members, or whatever, votes uh, the secret ballot. But small clubs like this, it's not a big deal. You know, to be so formal. It's probably never happened, right? It's never not that happened way, that way. Not so I've never not, had a not, nomination not committee. Oh. That's to prevent people from being upset. You know how one officer can appoint, or it, it, it appears as though they they chose someone, and that that's what that's for. But I don't think we have that problem here. We're all uh, acceptance of uh, these flexible rules. All right. Well, I can see everybody is like glazed over. There's only a few making eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, just had to say that because, you know, technically we're supposed to have a nominating committee, but we don't have to. All right. Well, let's bring this up a little later. We'll have to socialize this, as it were, and uh, <coughs> we have silence. All righty. What else do we need to cover? Um... I guess we can move on to, to talking about the presentation and yeah. Uh, I think I got a, I have a plan. It's yeah. a two pla two part plan here. Okay. So yes, sir. Ask if anybody has anything you want to bring up. Okay. Any show of hands? Audience. Anybody have any questions? Or any topics? To questions? Topics. Yeah. Oh, topics. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Nothing. Okay. All right. Well, I have um, kind of a what is that hearing bells? <laughs> Somebody's doorbell, doorbell ringing. Ring. Ring. Uh, I have a couple of different topics that I wanted to cover today. We have a number of opportunities that are coming up uh, this month uh, around emergency communications and Aries in particular, uh, where. We're going to be doing a hospital drill that's coming up. And a lot of the communications that we've done in the past has been voice communications. And we're, we're looking at taking that to the next step, to getting into some basic level digital communications. And so there's a, what they call NBEMS, or Narrow Band Emergency Messaging System. And the whole purpose of that system is to be able to do point-to-point -point messages in a digital fashion. Uh, I am as much of a, a student or a learner of this as anybody else, okay? But I'm going to go ahead and give a presentation on the parts that I'm working with. So when you have questions, understand that I'm still learning, okay? And I'm sure there are folks in here that have experience with digital mode that can uh, fill in some gaps for us here. Okay? The other part of this is uh, later on I wanted to do a, a segment on the role of emergency communications today and our local community and what is the role of ARIES and HAM radio in our community and how we can plug into that. And um, so the two part of that is that I'm stalling for Roy Duggar to come up and chat with us, but he probably won't be here for another 15 to 20 minutes. In the meantime, and we're going to go over uh, something called ANDFL Message. It's Android FL Message. 
Okay. So basically, it runs on uh, an Android smartphone. Smart. Can you talk? Smartphone. And I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get this to all play nice. And we'll see if we can get this to go. All right. Come on. Space here. Are we seeing? Okay. So let me just explain a little bit about what I'm doing here. Is I've got an Android phone connected by a USB cable to my uh, Mac laptop. It's a PowerBook laptop. Okay. And I'm using an application called Visor. It's a freeware, and so it's ad. It, it has ads embedded, right? It's the nature of the beast. What's it called? Visor. Like ignorance. Yes. Review. Yes. V Y S O R. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and swipe that away, and I'm going to go ahead and quit out of this, so I can kind of give you a quick. So this is the app right here. <coughs> Called it's right up this one right here, ANDFL message. So it's uh, downloaded off of uh, a website. It's not a, a, an app store app. Okay, so you have to go to their service. You just search for ANDFL message. Um, let me just bring that up here real quick. A N D F L M S G. And you download it from SourceForge. Okay? And basically, you just download the latest version. Now, this one here is identifying as my, my Mac computer, and so that's not what I want to. I want, you just go to the page, it identifies what your device is. You just click on the green button that says download latest version and load it up. Okay? So, here we go. I'm on my phone. I'm going to go ahead and unlock it. I'm going to go ahead and launch an EFL message. So, um, the second part to this is actually, I don't need anything. I can just run this whole thing right from my phone. So, I'm just going to send a text message first, right? So, uh, KF6AH sending a test message. Typing with my thumbs. And cancel. Okay. All right, so you see right in here, it's a little hard to see, but right there is where I just put my message. And I'll put a little bit more. Uh, H-E-L-O world. Okay? So that's all I'm going to do is I'm just going to send that message. To where? So right now, I'm just going to play it out of the speaker. So we'll just we'll be able to hear what it sounds like. So I'm going to hit send text. <laughs> okay, and that was the whole message being sent. That's it. Okay, it's not a very big sent. It's not a very large amount of data, and it's just playing it out audio. Now, what you could do if you wanted to is you could literally hold the microphone next to the cell phone, hit send, key down, and send it acoustically. Yeah, and in many cases that will work. Although it's not optimal because you have background noise that it'll pick up. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And you can overdrive your microphone or not drive enough, you know, all that kind of thing. So you can do that acoustically. Now, a better way is I have, I've purchased a very inexpensive 
well, very inexpensive. I think it comes out around sixty dollars. Is that right? When we get done with all the cables. So basically, I ordered that, which is uh, an adapter interface that will tie my radio input to my computer output input, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so that's the computer interface to radio interface. Okay, and this one is called a Wolfie Link. Okay, now a cool thing about this is it doesn't have any internal battery. It has no no external power to it. Uh, well, actually, it's powered by the cell phone. It gets the phantom power for the for the electric microphone off of the power cord, and that's what's used to charge it, charge it, or actually operate it. Okay. So that's a very simple solution. It doesn't have any external knobs, so once I get it set up, I can't adjust it. I just leave it, right? But in most cases, that's fine for me. Now, I went ahead and ordered it with the cable for my radio, which is a Yaesu FT817. It also works on the uh, 8900, 8800, <coughs> pretty much the, the, the Yaesu radios that have this connector interface, right? <coughs> so, get that hooked up to the back of this. Get that plugged in. And now, I plug that into here. And turn on my radio. Okay, so this is just a little silly receiver. I have my 817 hooked up to a dummy load, so I'm not broadcasting all over the place. I can pretty much just keep it to the room, right? So, let's go ahead and unlock it. So there's no differences there, and hopefully... Now, one thing that I learned, which is a little weird, is my phone turns the volume down, yeah. so I don't damage my hearing when I have my <laughs> earbuds in. And so I have to turn the volume up real quick. <coughs> Not the ringtone. I'm going to hit my send text again. And then turn my volume all the way up. And so now I'm transmitting. And it's coming out over RF. Okay? What, what protocol is that? Um, so the encoding the is um, MT632000LG. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't care. It's because that's the default that this device is set for. That makes sense? Yeah. So, um, now, the, the, the next step after that is, well, how do I get this to them? Right? I have to do the same kind of thing. I have to hook this up to another radio, or I could just set it up and just hold it to the radio. That makes sense? I could do it acoustically as long as my background is quiet. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the attractive features of this protocol and this tool is that you could have just handy talkies and a cell phone, which many of us already have, and we could do this acoustically if we have to. Well, there goes my ads. So how's the new, how's the, new, the other radio been picking up? So it's better if you have it all cabled up like I have here, because then you don't have the background noise. But essentially, I can do all of this acoustically, right? I could just set two of them. In fact, this is what I've been doing to try and learn how to use the app, is I just unplug this. Let's turn this one on. So hopefully it is on. I'll unlock it. Let's get this so I don't see it anymore. Okay, so now I'm going to, I am going to send a message from this one. The quick brown fox. Okay, so now I'm just doing this acoustically, okay? So let's. Switch over to here. I'm going to go into, I'm in a receive mode now. 
I'm going to turn on a waterfall so I can see what's going on. You can, you can see me talking here. Right? So now I'm going to go ahead and send this text. This is from this one. And I'm just doing this acoustically right now. So that's essentially all I did, is I just sent the message here acoustically. The system has a, 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 a tone detection system, the RSID, and it identified it as MT632000LG. It selected the correct modem, and then it downloaded the, the text and printed it out. Well, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Now we can do chat. Yay! Okay, well that's really not that useful, is it? I mean, we can send little text messages as, Hi! How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Well, we could do that on the radio, right? A lot faster. Where this starts to get a little bit more interesting is that FL Message has a library of um, forms that we can use to send and receive messages. So the one of the common ones is the <coughs> ICS-213. So I press and hold, and uh -huh. it brings up an ICS-213, which is one of our standard message handling type of forms in the um, instant command system, in the ICS system. All right, so uh, incident uh, fun... Fun, fun. Okay. Okay. Two. Oh, we're going to send it to Jim. Position. Uh, Vertical. Sorry? Vertical. Vertical. <laughs> Vertical. From Neil. Position. Seated. I'm being silly, but you yeah. get the idea. Yeah. Subject. Hello. Test. Date. I just click on the little button there. Okay, time. I just click on the little button there. And it cool. pre-populates it. And that is 1328L for local versus mm -hmm. UTC and so forth. Okay, message. Oh, see, hello world, how are you? Okay, end of message signature, wow. Neil, position, seated, again that's going to be more of a title, and now there's a space for the reply, time, signature, blah, blah, blah. Now, here's the part that got me a little bit. You, now that you've written that, if I return, I just lost all of my text. Oops, nope, stop that. No, stop it. Stop it. Do that. Okay, where'd it go? If, if, if I hit return, I lose all the text that I just typed in. So one of the things I've quickly learned is... Uh, a, a Bluetooth keyboard would be really handy with this <laughs> because typing these forms in by hand is uh, painful. Miss Sean. Oh, I'm just sitting. Oh, okay, I see your hand up, so I was a question. Okay, so now what you have to do is you have to find these little boxes down here at the bottom. It says save to outbox, save to drafts, save to templates. So you could fill in a bunch of this as a template, yeah. right? And then save that so that you can pull it up and just fill in the details later. Well, I'm going to go ahead and save this to the Outbox. Okay, now, boom, I'm going to go to my Outbox, okay? And I see my one message sitting there, okay? Now, I'm just going to do this acoustically and hope to heaven this actually works. Because <laughs> I didn't prepare this beforehand. You know how it goes, right? Yeah. You set up a demonstration and everybody comes to watch the wreck. <laughs> okay, so 
I am going to turn my waterfall on. I'm going to switch this over. Let's see if this will work. Uh -oh. This is my lab lab uh, phone, and it may that? not it may not be happy with me. Okay. Access device storage. Uh, okay. Unhappy Mac. Are you going to work for me? Come on. Looks like the old Mac box there. Yeah. Disconnect again. What happened? Okay. Always allow access from this computer. Okay. It's around. It's still in there. Still got your stuff? Uh, I gave them the there we go. Okay, now we're connecting back up. All right. <coughs> so, here we go. So now this is the white phone right here, right? We're going to do acoustic coupling. I'm going to turn these so that they can hear one another really well. And I'm about to hit the send button. Okay, so outbox. And then in the bottom right corner I have a send all messages. So I'm going to hit that. You got to pump your volume up. Mm. Uh -oh. oh, I get it. It's a digital. No, I get it. Okay, so what you're seeing is a, a console, if you will, of the actual raw data. So now, I should be able to come over in this one, and I should go to my inbox, and I should have uh, a message from today. I should be able to click on that, Yeah. and there it is. I get it. There is my message, my ICS-213. I should have my ICS-213. And, okay, so the formatting came out a little weird. Oh, I see. You know what it did? Is it just collapsed the message box to just the, to however many, however many lines I had. But all the fields are there. So now I should be able to reply, send my message, boom, send it off. Now clearly, this took a little bit to do, but where this really becomes valuable is our served agencies, the, the, our customers, are going to provide a formatted file for us to work with of some form or fashion. And to be able to get the accurate data from point A to point B in a quick, efficient manner, we really need to be using these digital modes. And this is just a tool. No, stop, 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 stop. Bad. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so my my point though is that this is just one one tool, right? And it's something that many of us already have on us. Now the 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 interface to make it work over the radio is a nice to have. It's going to give you better reliability, a, a cleaner interface a less noisy interface. In theory though, you could do it just holding it up to the radio. And I did a test the other night where I, oh, I played it out over the radio next to the cell phone just acoustically like I'm doing right now and it did indeed work. Now I didn't try a big message and, and, that, and, and I, it was relatively quiet in the background, right? That's where having that, that interface cable makes a big difference. Yeah. Okay. That's, well, that's going to be my question. The little cable you showed that for sending, yeah. you would need one for receiving also. I, I, I think it's because going to be to your advantage. Because command posts and staging areas and yeah. all those places are very, very noisy. And very noisy. Hospitals. And, what? Yeah. And a ways back, you did one on wind something. Windlink. Yeah. yeah I did. Isn't that... Digital? That's digital too. The, the and and the the cool thing about Winlink is that I can send a message 
to my inbox, my mail server, and then it gets forwarded automatically to wherever it's going to go. Right? I don't have to have a person on the other end. Alternatively, you can do point to point with WinLink. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right? And that does work. This works on a cell phone. WinLink yeah. doesn't work on a cell it requires phone. Requires a server to do email. Yeah, and you have to have all that infrastructure in place for it to work. This is cell phone. This is peer to peer, point to point communication, with just no as infrastructure. As so as long as all the cell powers are up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. What was that? Point to or point to multi point if they can hear you. That's true. So let's yeah. say I send a message to all of you. You could turn your cell phones on and listen and decode. So, but I think you misunderstood. Any Android device and your cell phone can be in airplane mode. It doesn't use the cell power. Right. Right. It's just using the computer in the cell phone to do the computer. Yeah. So this. So how is it sending me the thing over over your ham over radio. radio? Over your ham radio. Yes. Yeah. Also, the MT6. You did. Hold on. Hold on. Go. Go. You mentioned you could send it to your mailbox with uh, either a dis distribution list or whatever, but it still would find its way to a to a Winlink customer, if you will. That's you right. Put the Winlink.org. That's right. The, uh, Winlink has the advantage that I can send a message to a regular internet served email address, and that message will get there. There is no amateur radio segment on that end. I just have to have it on my end, right? My end and the RMS server. That's the radio part. This has the advantage of when I'm sending and receiving messages, um, this is literally in my pocket. I have this available. All I need is the radio and and this application. This cell phone is not attached to anything. Right. It's just working as a, a dumb terminal or smart terminal in this case. So you could be in a car, helicopter, airplane. Yeah. I'm not connect I, I don't have to be connected to Bluetooth. I don't have to be connected to Wi Fi, not to the cell phone. It's just a terminal at that point. In fact, this doesn't even have a cell phone service, this one. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So in the coming weeks, you're probably going to hear some of this scrambly squabbling on, on simplex frequencies. And we may be, with permission, doing some tests over some of the repeaters. Okay, But uh, that's what we're doing. And I encourage all of you, get, get this app, load it up on your phone, and then you'll be able to uh, see exactly what messages are being transferred back and forth. Now, were there some other questions? Yeah, I got a bunch of packet stuff for sale. You do? <laughs> Sweet. So, so packet, After that. Is, packet is not dead. Packet is no. a legitimate form yeah. of open data. And those of you who know John, <coughs> John's software runs over packet. And it runs with his software, with his compression software, it will run more data over packet than what packet normally would you hear You hear it on HF all the time. Yeah. All right, um, Roy, are you available to do a, a chat about emergency communications and where we stand today? Here. All right, yeah. so why don't we turn the lights back on? I'll turn off the projector for now. Take the podium. And then dark, dark at, after Roy is done, anybody who wants to come and play, we're going to be, uh, Lloyd and I are going to be playing with getting this to work over the radios themselves and working out some of the details. Yeah. There's lots of different ways to interface. That's a whole other, whole other you can use audio cables, you can use uh, Bluetooth dongles, you can use the, the sound modems. I mean, there's a million ways of doing that. Um, just need to get the audio from your radio to the thing and from the thing to the radio. That's the trick. Right. So most of you guys already know me. Uh, I'm Roy. I'm the emergency services specialist for the city of Santa Maria. Um, been there for 10 years. Before that, uh, I was with the American Red Cross for 25 years. Um, my and job... And worked it off. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Um, <laughs> it's true, some days. 
so my jobs, one of my jobs was uh, emergency communications and technology. So my job on disaster relief operations was setting up communications and computer networks in austere environments, in other words, areas where there isn't anything. Um, I was the, for the Red Cross, I was communications officer for September 11th in New York. So my job was to get telephony and computer networking and everything out of New York for all the Red Cross stuff and some of the government served agencies back into the internet again. And we used satellite dishes and some other tricks for that. Um, on other projects, like in Parker, Arizona, uh, we used ham radio. We used uh, HF and VHF uh, and UHF frequencies to do a variety of things. So, one of the challenges that's come up recently, there was a uh, nice thing about the internet is it's a democracy. Anybody can get on and say and do anything they want. doesn't necessarily mean it's true. <laughs> um, so when, uh, uh, when Neil asked me to come, he said, you yeah, know, there's this, what about this guy on the internet who said that the state of California and CAL FIRE isn't using ham radio anymore? Um, so, first of all, CAL FIRE hasn't used ham radio since about 1962, I think, or five was like the last time somebody went out with their HF rig in the back of their station wagon and supported uh, fires. Um, there is an auxiliary communication service that does go out on fires, and they used that in Colorado last year, as a matter of fact. And that does use amateur radio frequencies and other things. There's actually an auxiliary communication service that is actually at the state emergency operation center, what we call the SOC, uh, and they've been operational 24-7 now for all these fires over the last couple of months. So what does ham radio do for uh, disaster relief? It doesn't provide communication for fire and law in 99.99% .99 of the cases. It provides auxiliary communications for all the other things that are happening on the disaster that don't have their own communication services, right? or have communication services that aren't resilient. Our police department, fire department, just put in a multi-million dollar communication system in the city of Santa Maria. I don't even, I can't even count that number of zeros. I have no idea how much it costs. Um, and that system is designed to handle their normal everyday loads for the things that they do within the city of Santa Maria. Um, they do, doesn't do anything for Red Cross, doesn't do anything for Salvation Army, doesn't do anything for Catholic Charities, uh, doesn't do anything for any of the churches, it doesn't do anything for CERT teams, doesn't do anything for these those teams, or anybody else who may be going out and doing disaster relief, or helping with the community, helping the community during their time of need. That's, you know, we have one ham down in the newly licensed, I would assume, in South County, who keeps bugging the Aries folks down there. It's like, but what? how do I program my radio so I have the same frequency as the fire station? Ugh. They're like, no. He said, but I need, when something happens, I want to call the captain at the station down the street for me. <laughs> no. no. That's not how this works. But there are people out there who think that that is how it works. Um, and some of you have, how many here actually host repeaters, have a repeater and, and maintain it? There's a couple of you. And so, you know, have so what? a repeater. Yeah. Repeater. You know, you do. You got your call sign on them anyway, right? <laughs> I thought you meant in my pocket. No, no. Oh. Well, well there, is that a repeater in your pocket? Or you just have to say, um, they call it <laughs> so, those of you who need your buildings, you know, some of them are on your property or in your buildings, and some of you have them in government-owned buildings. Right? And there are amateur radio repeaters on Vandenberg Air Force Base. You know, you don't get to, not just anybody gets to go up to a, a, on a military reservation, go into a building, put whatever radio they want in there, and an antenna on the side of the building, go, hey, I got a repeater, right? That isn't how that happens. There's no... Um, it's a good way to end up in jail, quite frankly, if you even make it that far. Um, so, in some cases, there are, there on the internet, there's been this guy who's complaining 
uh, because somebody discovered an amateur radio repeater in a CAL FIRE repeater building. Um, and CAL FIRE didn't know whose repeater it was. The local fire chief didn't know whose repeater it was. The local sheriff didn't know whose repeater it was. And the repeater wasn't labeled. Didn't have a sign on it said, in case of something goes sideways, this is who controls it. The control operator information was not on the repeater. Now, all everybody here is an amateur radio operator. So, is there a control operator for a repeater? No. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Whoever's call signs on their repeater is responsible for that repeater, right? If it if it locks on and doesn't turn off, who's the FCC going to go track down? Yeah, the owner, right? So, and that's why repeaters are supposed to have a control frequency so that if everything else locks up, you can still get into it and turn it off, right? So, this particular repeater didn't have any of those things. Um, and when the local fire chief actually found out who had it, he was a little nervous because the folks that had it there weren't exactly an Aries Reese's group. You know, they were, amateur radio is a very diverse population, right? So we've got people throughout the entire political spectrum. Um, we have people, entire religious spectrum, uh, capabilities, uh, technical, non-technical, good communication skills, not good I mean, it's uh, up and down, sideways, and that's one of the strengths, quite frankly, of amateur radio, because that's in our served agent, in the served world, in meeting community needs, that's where our strength lies, because we have that social capital, we have those <coughs> linkages into those neighborhoods and local communities and in the backwoods and in the cities and everywhere else, right? So that's what makes amateur radio particularly strong. But just like in any other group, it's really easy for anyone who doesn't belong to a group to paint it with one color. Right? And some of us struggle with that as well, I'm sure. Right? Uh, pick one, anyone. Hmm. I'm sure there's something where you say, those blah, 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 right? Those rich people, those immigrants, those guys that buy food from smart and final, whatever. Um, you know, as human beings, we create templates because it makes our world easier to understand. But the reality is the world's a lot more uh, diverse than that. So these guys went sideways. And they got a guy on the internet who decided to take up their cause. And, and again, when you're in media, you want to make things dramatic, right? Otherwise, people won't watch your show. So his show got over a million hits. People who were saying, well, you know, that's really not how it went, they've gotten like, 500, 1,000 hits, right? Uh, one of the things we found out in social media years ago is that things that aren't true will actually be replicated through the internet much, much faster, actually exponentially faster than things that are true. Lies go around the world seven times before truth gets its boots on in the morning. Pretty much. That's, and that's with almost anything, and not just radio. Bad news travels fast. Bad news travels fast, especially if it's dramatic and not even true. <laughs> so the good so so the news is that yes, there is an amateur radio repeater in a government building. And the the owners of that repeater have been notified that um, that they need to submit a report on what equipment it is, what frequencies it's on, who's actually the control operator. Um, it has to be tested to be in that building. Um, in other words, it can't have spurious emissions. Um, because when you're in a government building, there are other users in there that are, that's their primary mode of communication. They don't want an unlicensed or an non-type accepted piece of equipment radiating in their frequencies or causing their systems to not work correctly. Right? Everybody in this room sort of kind of understands that part. Yeah. Right? So, um, unfortunately, they don't do that for free. So, they had fees next to all these things. The other is, if you own a repeater site, or if you have a building on a repeater site, do you just give people space in that building out of the goodness of your heart for free? Some do. The number of those people are getting smaller and smaller every day, yeah. right? Uh, but most people want to quit pro quo, and even that's getting harder to do now, right? Uh, the number of places where you can stick towers and, and, and things on mountaintops is getting more and more scarce. Competition for those spaces 
is actually getting higher, which seems counterintuitive to some of us because there aren't as many radio stations and TV stations anymore, but everybody's using some form of RF. In the old days when it used to be oil companies and delivery companies, now it's microwave dishes and internet service and WIF services and other things. Um, so people are getting cost recovery for those things. Now, on the government side, if somebody can make a case that there's a served, popu a served population in, that is being unserved or that needs to continue to be served, and you have a good relate, your amateur radio group has a good relationship with those agencies, and they understand what you're doing to support those communities, then usually we can write a letter to the, to the agency that owns that building and say, will you please waive the costs or give us a discount? So, and they even do this with other government agencies. Right? So, uh, police department, you know, on, well, let's take San Inez Peak, for example. There's a government building on San Inez Peak, which has multiple three, four, and five letter acronym agencies in that one building. Uh, none of them are in there for free. Right. They all pay the Forest Service. Yeah. Right? Um, now, they all pay that with our tax dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so they're robbing Peter to pay Paul, but still, it's that running business government as a business, right? You don't do something for nothing, kind of thing. Um, so they don't pay to be there. The only people that aren't paying to be in that building is amateur radio and the um, search and rescue, and um, let's see, there's another, and not the Aero Squadron, the Civil Air Patrol. Civil Air, yeah. So there are some nonprofit volunteer-based organizations that are there, but the reason they're there is because the repeater owners and the um, owner and um, the team of people who work with them are consummate professionals, right? So they actually provide services to those other agencies, they assist them when they need it, and um, their equipment's type accepted, it's commercial grade, um, they have a sense of uh, trust with that individual and those individuals that work with them, right? That just doesn't happen because you wrote a nasty letter to a governor or somebody and said that, you know, his, his poop stinks, right? These are long-term relationships that require, you know, being ethical, honest, service-oriented, right? That sort of thing. Licensed. And, well, and licensed, that, that helps. <laughs> and skilled. Right, um, and skill can mean uh, in, again being honest. Right, no, you don't no. you know, own it. Right, it's um, your relationship with others is just as important. Ever since 9/11, I've discovered that both commercial and government people are real leery of anybody. I mean, anybody coming into their facility, they don't know what's what's up. And you can prove a wonderful case. You can have a slideshow in their office, the whole bit, bring in three guys that give a story, and they still won't let you in. Yeah. The state of California has turned me down a couple more than of once. Right. And, again, it, it depends on, on your, what it is you're trying to do. Do you actually need to be in that building, or are there other opportunities? Um, but if there are places you need to be, you need, uh, we need to talk. Because I can it's not so much the radio being in the building, yeah. it's you having the combination to that door. Well, and there is that. Because that puts yeah. it in a, perhaps, an invaded kind of yeah. way. Well, and there are some security stuff, even with the city. Uh, some of our, sec the new requirements for our networks, um, yeah. with all the network security stuff. And again, right. now that you're starting to link uh, repeaters together with, you know, yeah, networking. Ransomware is a real... Well, and so getting a, having a back door into a network, I mean, there were some repeater sites that I saw where it had uh, uh, home-style wireless routers in them that were unsecured. Yeah. Wire, you know, it was the, what came in the box at a repeater site that had other agents. I mean, that was uh, unshielded cable coming out of them for other devices. Um, so those of you who are, know anything about radios, unshielded cables in a repeater site is a, is a bad thing. Creates noise, receives noise, uh, creates interference, that sort of thing. And home-based equipment isn't, and commercial-based equipment, for the most part, 
aren't designed to be in high RF environments either. Way. <coughs> anyway, so that's what's going on. Um, it's not a new thing. It's been uh, it's something that, it, like you said, Jim, ever since September 11th and even before that, um, that those systems and those spaces are critical, quite frankly, to the services a lot of agencies provide. And the better our relationships are with those folks um, at a lot of different levels, the more likely it is that we'll be able to continue to serve them. So the and, the, and, the other, and here's the other half of the coin, too. One of the things that makes, another thing that makes amateur radio, besides its internal diversity, is its equipment diversity and spatial diversity. We don't have to have all of our eggs in one basket. So if we put all of our repeaters in the same repeaters that our served agencies are in, and that building goes down, what happens to our service delivery model? You know, we, we're down too. So part of what makes us you know, useful in a lot of ways for, on that world, again, amateur, not to undersell the whole part of amateur radio as far as being, uh, it's a hobby, you know, to learn new things, to learn technology, uh, to advance the radio art, uh, to promote uh, uh, international friendship and understanding, right? There's all those things that are in the, listed in the amateur service. It isn't, you know, providing service to the community and emergency services is one of like seven things, right, or five. So it isn't always about that, but our capability of being able to be di diverse and to meet needs when their systems, which are have single point failures in them, they're designed to be working every single day. But they are also susceptible to single point failures. And amateur radio, the reason it works during major disasters and catastrophic events, is because we're not a single point failure. Right. Right? Multiple transmitters, multiple antennas. And multiple modes, and multiple, multiple locations. And multiple <laughs> locations. And, you know, uh, Neil, we, we, had, we had a series of fires. Uh, every repeater site in Santa Barbara County was surrounded by fire. Um, and had smoke was impinging on the units. Some of them, the repeaters were going down in them because they were overheating. Some of them lost antennas and feed lines. So called Neil, and I said, how about NVIS? And Neil goes, okay, well, 20 meters shouldn't work, but I'm going to try it anyway. Well, with all the smoke in the air, 20 meters worked great. Yeah. <laughs> right? All over the well, air. I don't remember if it was 20 or 40, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah you were using an 817 even. Yeah. 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 So, QRP. Yeah. And he was, you know, we had somebody down in uh, Oxnard, Ventura, in yeah. Santa Barbara, yeah. and, and yeah. Um, folks up in San Luis were busy, but they heard him. Yeah. So, you know, just the ability to be able to do that, you know, the folks that use radio every day in government, they don't have training in that. They just push the button, mm -hmm. and it does what it's, they're, it's supposed to do. And if it doesn't, as far as they're concerned, uh, they're a monkey and it's a brick. You know, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, they don't do that because we tell them they cost $10,000 each. Which they do. So this uh, repeater problem is going to go away. Well, the repeater problem is always going to be an issue. I mean, but the, that but that that, that, that particular, particular one repeater in problem. Shasta County. That particular repeater with that particular group of people, um, they've got a lot of trust building to do. Yeah, it, that resulted in tens of thousands of phone calls to the assembly. Right. And so those folks are going to then call. You know the. Chief of, of Cal Fire. Chief of Cal Fire is going to call his regional chief and his comm chief, and they're going to go find out what's going on. And when they, you know, when they come back, one of two things are going to happen. One is they're going to say, okay, we need to make this go away, so fix it, let them be in there. Or it's going to come back and say, oh no, you don't want these guys anywhere near a government radio system. You know, these are guys who you know, don't like the government. So having them in a critical infrastructure facility for people who don't think that there should be a government is not something that's probably going to fly for very long. Yeah. Um, and it's probably a good thing they caught them now before they went in there and monkey wrenched everybody else's stuff. It makes us uh, fortunate here on the base. Yeah. No. Really fortunate. The, 
The relationship on Vandenberg Air Force Base and in Santa Barbara County in general, San Luis Obispo County and Ventura counties, uh, the amateur radio community still has uh, a great deal of uh, respect in this region. There are folks who, who are new in my field who don't understand. Uh, there's public who still think that ham radio is a bunch of old guys and tubes <laughs> and Morse code. And, some which like, there is, some like right? There's some, old, there's some old people in here, and there's some people in here who know how to do Morse code. Uh, there's some young people in here who know how to do Morse code. Um, so again, that's the stereotype, right? But the reality is they also hear from their colleagues, hey, yo, are you guys getting these 214 things? Red Cross has been using this software that Neil demonstrated uh, to support their shelters up in Northern California yeah. for the last five years. Uh, Form-based. Um, it's form-based, and the, the shelter workers, they fill the form out, they send yeah. it out, they get it back. looks like the form. Uh, there's not stuff on there they don't understand, uh, and it's relatively fast. They're, That's great. And it's not getting transcribed incorrectly. Right. That's so the problem. So they, they do the shelter numbers, they do what, they, what the kitchen needs, and it goes in, and it comes back, and they, and they get what they want, and they get when they need it. And the numbers, when they feed the beast, what we call feeding the beast in disaster relief. It's getting that information from the field all the way up to the governor's office and then back down again. Um, and that's what the um, volunteers do um, with the ACS, the communication service at the state, at the seat, at the SOC. So, anyway. Really? Yes? I make a comment. We are so fortunate in this county to have Roy and to have Jim and a couple more of you who have contacts on the BAMs. We can't count on two or three people to keep our reputation up with the government and with certain agencies. We all need to take part in the exercise that you put out so beautifully in email of exactly what you want, what you expect, and what's good, and what's better, and what's best. And we all need to do that because if he gets hit by a bus one yes. day, or or Jim isn't there to take care of his computer, somebody's going to say, who are those guys? And they need to know from having met us and having worked with us and having had us in their faces and in their offices and in their command posts and so on. That's yeah. how they know who yes, we are. That's true. In it, and that really is critical. Um, because the, if you're serving somebody and you're in, at their site and you start complaining, you're swearing, you show up yet you didn't, didn't take a shower, didn't comb that day, you forgot to put a shirt on. Um, you know that's it's hard to get past that. If you're square, if you're square and tight, high and tight, you know, dressed professional, California professional. You know, polo's good, right? Yeah. Uh, doesn't have to be a jacket. Um, I saw it. I saw it. That works. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, and polite, yes sir, yes ma'am, how may I help you, uh, not the, yeah, what the hell do you want me for, or like, yeah. oh, this is, oh, this is stupid, you guys should have a better system than this, I shouldn't even have to be here, you guys are like all screwed up, you know, so, uh, it's like, uh, you know, it doesn't take long, like we said, for bad news to travel really, really fast. And so that one person then paints hundreds of people rather than the, the good stuff that never gets repeated. Um, I can say in my meetings that we've had several folks who understand completely how, uh, how necessary amateur radio is for us in my, my part of the world. Police and fire get all the frequencies they want. Emergency management, they're like, you, who are you? What do you need frequencies for? Well, here, you can use... San Barbara County uses the same frequency as waste management. Yeah. And well, waste, yeah, and waste, yeah, and waste management has 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 priority. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so well, right <laughs> there is something to be said for that. Yeah. You, yeah. You, it's like what, what's more important: somebody knowing what's going on and trying to find resources, or somebody that's actually doing something, like getting like the mafia. garbage out of your yard. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So we're all we're all um, representatives. Of amateur radio and what we say and do on the internet and in public and then with our own families reflects on all of us whether we like it or not so I would like to add one thing and that is that you know there are ways that we can serve our community and build these relationships quietly and respectfully that have follow-through effect 
Um, I've been helping down in Santa Barbara uh, with their CERT program. And it turns out that the head of that CERT program is Roy's peer in, in Santa Barbara. And I continue to keep that relationship going, keeping a positive relationship and presenting a professional image for amateur radio. And so she has two perspectives of amateur radio, the Santa Barbara Aries group and then me. Right? And then when she asks for someone to step up and teach her CERT volunteers uh, how to use radios, who did she call? She called me, not the Aries folks in Santa Barbara, because of that relationship. That make sense? Mm -hmm. And it's grooming these relationships. Uh, I don't know how groomed you feel, but... <laughs> I just, had the, I, just had the, I just had the Boy Scout uh, thing, so yeah. It's, it's yeah. Very, uh, in fact, I, I, I called I'll call Roy in to, because this whole topic is very polarizing, right? The way it was presented on the internet, it became very polarizing. And I wanted to get somebody else's perspective on this in front of the group. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And it's through these relationships that we maintain. Uh, a level of respect and and, and uh, trust, but ultimately. And but it, again, ham radio is diverse. So having having a repeater, having your own political beliefs, having nets where you can share your your opinions, uh, having backup systems and nets for when you think the world's going to end and all that sort of stuff. That's fine. That's awesome, right? But that's not. Having a repeater in a in a government served agency building with yeah. those attitudes that's it's kind of like a, a non sequitur right so um, not here to tell people how to think or what to do or what not to do I think as amateur radio one of the things that um, that I hope we continue to do is to keep those you know understand that we all have a common goal and that's you know our hobby mm -hmm. so. are there any questions or comments. Yeah, I want to bring up the. Uh, so, how are we going to work this uh, hospital drill that's coming up that we've done two or three years now? So, same old, same old. Um, so, I, I, <laughs> so I, uh, uh, I did tell John Kendall that, uh, or reaffirm to John, I didn't tell John anything. John is the uh, the DEC for Santa Barbara County, right? He's the head Aries guy, and so. Um, he's the one who is coordinating uh, who's who in the zoo, where they're going, what frequencies they're going to use, what modes they're going to use, all that sort of stuff. Um, so I've talked to John about what my needs are as a served agency and how he uh, works with the amateur radio folks to meet those needs uh, is between him and you guys. I'm here to support uh, any way I can. To, um, if you need the EOC or the radio room in Santa Maria to practice or to have a meeting and set stuff, something up or whatever, um, I've got a couple of different uh, got these K B Tech cables that will go between uh, a uh, what's called a TRRS connector. Mm -hmm. It's the connector on Android types things. Yeah. And a Kenwood connector, so we'll go to Kenwood radios and bow things and anything else that has a Kenwood connector. And supposedly has a circuit in there to keep things. Even. Yeah. For that price, I doubt it. But anyway, I think they just put a piece of plastic in there that looks like there's something there. Well, for, the, for the Lompoc Hospital, like we had Neil and Lloyd and Bob, and my Bob Harrison really has a great relationship with Jim down there at the at the hospital. But uh, yep. we get our comp plan the night before, and it's all push to talk audio with, with three different forms. We hope that Mr. Kendall can get us uniformly. Set up. Right. So um, I would encourage you to challenge up within your chain of command. I, I Bob is <laughs> Bob gets pain. He will. Okay. Because it's frustrating to it is to come in with you know three or four packet modes and voice and forms. Just we got to get working. We do, and and that's was my goal was to for us to have some time to practice uh, to share those of us who share discovery with others so that others don't have to suffer the same pain uh, over again um, and, and 
not have to try to practice on the day that the drill is. And as I told uh, John Kendall, um, is that in my world, at least for my serve needs, I'm happy to postpone that part of the exercise to a point in time when you all are, are able and willing to demonstrate those, uh, those concepts. This is a drill. It's not, this is all artificial. The timing's artificial, the, the, um, uh, the date's artificial. I mean, it's all the stuff that we, is for our convenience to get everything done okay. and, and, box. and to test. But I know from my career that disasters aren't that way. Right, they're they go sideways. The reason they are disasters is because things do go sideways. Things don't work the way you expect them to. And um, so, when I heard say, "Well, this is just the hospital drill. We just we do it the same way all the time," it just made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up because that means we don't have a lot of tools in our toolbox. If we're just using the if we're only using the crescent wrench all the time, what happens when we need the screwdriver? Hammer. So, um, so one of my goals, and, and one of the things as an emergency manager, uh, is that in our ex in our disaster plans, we have said for years we've had Red Cross in there and amateur radio as part of our backup for our community disaster plans every single year. But none of us were supporting those agencies. None of us were engaging them to make sure that they were participating in our exercises. None of us were working on, them on a, with them on a daily basis to encourage training, cross-training, making sure that we're you know, all doing ICS and on the same page. It was one of those things out of sight, out of mind. You just put it on there because it's easy, because we knew they were there. But if you don't practice it and you don't test it, it's, it's not there. It's like fire guys, they go to grab the, the tool off their truck, but if they don't do inventory every week, that tool's not gonna be in that box. Right? Uh, so they get the concept. It's just that they've forgotten about the rest of the community. They've been so focused on their own, <laughs> their own worlds that we forget that one of the key components of amateur radio, actually, is our ability to, uh, and one of the things that was correct in, in, the, in some of those discussions, is the ability of the amateur radio community to be, uh, be a false multiplier for us to be able to get information out into communities and back from communities so that we know where unserved needs are right? and where other potential clients uh, down in Long Beach, they had a power outage. It wasn't a PSPS, plug safety power outage, but they had a major power outage. And their 911 system went down. Yeah. They sent an amateur radio operator and a CERT person to every single building where they've had multiple EMS calls. You have a map. So it's the senior high rises, the skilled nursing facilities, those kind of places where I've helped by falling and I can't get up. That's about 80% of all of our calls. So they sent a ham radio person and a surf person to each one of those sites. Mm -hmm. And that was the communication back to the, uh, to the EOC, where the fire chief and the police, or actually watch commander and mm -hmm. the battalion chief were, so that they could assign resources whenever they were needed to those areas until they got their 911 system back up and running again. Yep. Those people have been training and drilling for decades and thought they'd never ever get used. And then when you, but when you need them, yeah. you need them. Our people die. Like have a insurance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And and the reason we stay engaged isn't for those days when we get to be called. We stay engaged because we get to learn new stuff and practice at doing other things. Right? Yeah, Soda. Well, we ought to practice once a year. Yeah, that'd be not a bad idea. That'd be better than what we're doing now. Yeah. Once a year. Yeah. So. The, the OI fire last year resulted in, in two deaths, apparently. And that was due to the fact that CERT, AM Radio, and Red Cross met every month, once a month, for the past 10 years. And they knew what to do. Yep. And it, it was like, they, they figured, oh, this will never happen, but it did. And it will. And uh, so from my point of view, uh, to have a, an emergency exercise once a year, uh, we might as well have a cocktail party. I think that would be much more useful. <laughs> but that's that's only my point of view. Yeah. 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 So what's the projected dates of this Europe? 
the, the drill is scheduled for um, November 21st. There's, there are other components on the 19th and 20th, but the, the main exercise is on the 21st. Three weeks. Uh, 9 a.m. to noon. Thanksgiving. Jim Jones is, Thanksgiving. Is, uh, he wants to participate. So there's one guy that you'll get. Which, the one that's dead? or? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jobs, not Jones. Jobs, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Sorry. I, I thought you said Jim Jones. I was thinking, yeah. It's like, I don't, I don't even drink Kool-Aid in here. <laughs> <laughs> the Kool-Aid guy. Just because he's still a member doesn't say he's still alive. <laughs> no, I didn't mean to say that about Jim. I love Jim. Right. He's a great guy. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here because I have an idea that I'd like to bounce off of you. Uh-oh. Um, Sounds good. Let's do it. <laughs> you know how cell phones have really sort of like... Everyone has one that's become very important. Right. Which, by the way, is built on amateur radio technologies yeah. developed by amateur radio folks, right? Yeah. Well, right. Yeah. The, uh, Advancing the radio art. Yeah, it's, it's the uh, multiple in, multiple out thing. Um, a year from now, we're, we're going to have what's called Starlink. Do you know what that is? I know what all star is. Starlink. Uh, SpaceX is putting up a constellation of Satellites, internet from space. Oh, that. Oh, that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. There's several of those. Bill Gates was going to do it too. Yeah. Well, yeah. And some other guys. There. Um, it's yeah. it's the early adopter who really gets the the pie. Well, it's the early adopter who's got to deal with the FCC and the in the International Radio Union to get the right frequencies. Well, it's it's in the works, and uh -huh. uh, they're going to launch. Uh, Anywhere from 60 to 400 at a time, twice a month. Um, so a year from now, we should have the constellation working. It's not going to be completely, you know, error free, but uh, uh, that's going to change everything. And um, what I'm proposed doing is, I'm going to write Elon Musk a letter. I have his address. <laughs> I'm going to ask him for um, uh, a demonstration unit for the club. Why not? Why not? Won't hurt. Mm -hmm. So, internet from space means that if everything goes out, the cell sites, the power, or you know, some earthquake disaster or something, we'll still have internet, and it'll be broadband. Maybe. 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 Depends on why. Except for that CME. Yeah, or, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just but it's a only little solar radiation never really hurt anybody. It's only going to improve. Yeah, unless you're in space. It, uh, well, this, is a, satellites. this is disruptive technology, and it's, it's really going to change it, things. It will change things in a lot of ways. It, it, like all the other tools we've had, um, there will be people who will use them for good, and there will be people who will use it for evil. Yeah, there's well, always unintended consequences. It should make the world safer because uh, air traffic and uh, ships at sea will have internet uh, broadband everywhere. But the other half of that coin, and, and yeah, and we should adopt them just like we do with All Star and all the other yes. technologies. Yes. And, but the just other, but that right doesn't in. make our other technologies. You know, my point with the data wasn't to say that voice is dead. Right. Uh, also, that um, CW is dead, right? Those options. are those are modes. Our yeah. diversity again is what our strength is. So and so, adopting new technologies, but then also maintaining our abilities for uh, uh, ones that are. Uh, as Bob pointed out so clearly the other night, said, "Don't forget the Kiss principle. Keep yeah. it simple. Keep stupid. it simple. You know. yeah. I think you left the last S off, but yeah, <laughs> use a little more flight. Keep it simple, Shakespeare." Um, yeah. So there, there is such a thing as when things really go sideways and nothing's working. Oh, yeah. You still want to have the backup to the backup to the Port, backup. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico was a really good example of why having good HF skills yeah. and good and knowing how to do the interface with the modems and the computer. Yeah. They say because lies. you weren't, we weren't going to send people there who weren't skilled at it. Right. That was the wrong place really to try it for the first time. They saved lives. That's yeah. for sure. No, it was it was critical. All right, That's I have one last announcement I yes, wanted to throw sir. out there for everybody. Thank you, Roy. Yes, thank yeah. you, Roy. One last announcement. 
there's a, a little known uh, contest slash drill slash fun opportunity coming up. Winter Field Day. Wow. Yeah. January 25th and 26th. It may get down to what? 40 degrees for us? <laughs> so Tough. Cool. At night? <laughs> yeah, at night. It was 40 this morning. Was last night. So um, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and step up to be um, chair for Winter Field Day. If anybody is interested in uh, trying it out and having some fun, um, hook up with me and we'll, uh, so I'll be sending further... I'll send out further information. We yeah. may do it here at the site, or we may get crazy and do something different. Mm. Yeah. So, um, so QLF is when you try to send Morse code with your left foot, right? Yes. So <laughs> what is it when you're so cold and you're chattering? <laughs> do you do? Oh, I don't know. I think that's the bug. Yes, sir. Does anybody have any yeah. uh, ideas, concepts, <coughs> yeah. or methods for tracking uh, drone uh, radios and uh, transmitters? Yeah, I do. Okay. Uh, working on a project where we want to detect drones, number one, and number two, uh, detect the transmitters. Yes. That's easy. It's that easy. Well, I need to talk to you. I think I get something for you to do. Yeah, it's uh, 70 megahertz. Right. For the most part. Yeah. For the most part. So, okay, let's talk about it. Yeah, well, yeah, Wi-Fi is easy to jam, too. And 916. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. Yeah, again, you know, uh, transmit tea hunting, right? Only, yeah. These are tea hunting on, on new frequencies that we don't traditionally tea hunt up. Right, right. Um, we okay, also before want to know how to break into the pack, uh, uh, yes. the uh, uh, phase shifting uh, of the uh, transmission. They, right. it's, pro it's possible to characterize the transmission so you know who it is. Okay, well, that's, what we, well, that's what we're looking for. All right, um, again, we're looking for people who are interested in becoming uh, part of the board. So uh, well, maybe we'll try and wrangle uh, Ernie back there into uh, joining our board this year. <laughs> After a 50-year uh, hiatus, he's ready to come back. That's right. 50 years. Wow. So... Uh, Come on up and chat with me after the uh, meeting if you have any questions about uh, AND FL message. I'm sorry, AND FL message. <laughs> Can't stop. Uh, and then I think Lloyd and I are going to play a little bit, uh, see if we can get his system up and running. So, all right. I that's, think it. that's it. Thank you. Thank you.